Before heading out for an extended road trip, Awak Kuir and Izzy Harrison and the rest of the Wings look to get back on the winning track before the hometown fans. It's the Wings and the Sparks in a rematch. It's no surprise Wings second-year point guard Ty Harris competes at the highest level. In 2017, she and current teammate Alicia Gray were national champions at South Carolina. Saturday, Harris tied her career high with 13 points, and she's shown the ability to run Vicki Johnson's offense and play defense, too. That will be especially important tonight as the Wings face six-time All-Star and 2016 League MVP Neka Agumake and the surging L.A. Sparks. Arike Ogunbowale and Marina Mabry. They put together four straight 20-point games each. The Wings will need that tonight as they face the L.A. Sparks. As we welcome you to Arlington, Texas in the College Park Center, home of the Dallas Wings. Of course, the Wings open the season with an impressive win over L.A. And tonight, they look to make it two in a row over the Sparks. Hello again, everybody, along with TCU head women's basketball coach and former WNBA player Reagan Peebley. I'm Ron Phil. Reagan, one thing the Wings don't have to worry about is scoring. They are number two in the league in that category. But the focus this week in practice for Vicki Johnson, the head coach, has been defense. She said they need to take pride in that. Yeah, well, look. BJ knows what she's doing. They're giving up an average of 90 points a game. So they're going to need to carve some time out and practice for defense. And defense isn't defense if you don't rebound. And if the Wings can really lock in that space, get better and grow, which they will, that gets them to the open court, which clearly they've got all the horses in the barn to be able to score a ton of points. So they also have horses in the barn coming off the bench because Ty Harris, she's been off the bench in all but one game. And she has shown great improvement from her rookie season. Yeah, second-year pro out of South Carolina, Ty Harris, is doing a great job. She's providing more than minutes. She's providing points. She's heading downhill, coming off the of handoffs, making great reads in the paint. But the other thing that she's doing is she's getting the scores the ball. She's had two games so far, Ron, where she's had seven assists as a backup. Well, for L.A., they dropped their first two games of the year, but they've come back to win their next two. And what's kept them together is the glue of the team, Neka Agumake. Well, Neka Agum excuse me, let me put some respect on that, that name. <laughs> Madam President yeah. has been given core designation for the L.A. Sparks. And the reason for it is she's the core of what they do on both ends of the floor. Neka can score. She can defend. She changes shots. But she also leads this team in so many ways. The Sparks coming off a of back-to-back wins at Chicago and Neka Ogumike, Madam President, is a big reason why. Well, tonight it's the dynamic duo of the Dallas Wings versus Sister Sister of the L.A. Sparks. Starting lineup, opening tip on the other side of the break. Dallas Wings basketball is brought to you by Novatech, the Metroplex's managed IT and office technology experts. And by American Airlines, official airlines of the Dallas Wings. You are why we fly. Hi, my name is Charlie Collier, and I'm from Baytown, Texas. One of my favorite things of being a part of Dallas Wings is the family camaraderie. Three things that people may not know about me are that I have a 6'8 younger brother, that I like video games, and I like to swim. And we're getting to know Charlie Collier. She will be making her start again tonight. You look at the numbers on her. In that opening game of her WNBA career, she had the double-double, 11 points, 10 rebounds. And B.J., Coach Vicki Johnson, telling us that's what she expects from Charlie Collier every game. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Brought to you by Texas Life Insurance Company. Los Angeles, because of some injuries, they're going to make a couple of changes. Taya Cooper, former Lady Bear of Baylor, will be getting her first start of the year, fourth of her career. Nia Coffey, also her first start of the season. Shanae Agumake is going to be out tonight. Still has soreness in that knee. They want to take uh, precaution with that. For da Dallas, it'll be the usual starting five. Mariah, Arike, Marina, Kayla, and Charlie Collier. The way they started against Phoenix, I think Vicki Johnson probably says, ladies, we got to go out there and throw the first punch tonight. Well, yeah, we're going to talk about keys to the, the game later on, but uh, that is a huge key to this game, that they get a strong start. One of the mistakes L.A. made in the, the first game is they gave a young Dallas team a chance to build confidence early. 
and they can't allow that today if you're L.A. Well, the head coach of the L.A. Sparks, Derek Fisher, in his third year, 18 seasons in the NBA, most of them with the L.A. Lakers, won, of course, five NBA titles, also had some time with the uh, Dallas Mavericks, and to his right, you can see former Dallas Wings coach Fred Williams, one of the assistants, the other, Latricia Trammell, the pride of Seminole, Oklahoma. And there is Neka Agumake. She got popped in the nose in the first half in the Chicago game on Sunday. And she went over to the sideline. They were reviewing it. Did come back, shoot the free throws. Didn't start the second half, but came back. She's tough. How about your keys? Well, yes. Yeah, again, we talked about the strong start, but another big important one is limit the turnovers. And we'll talk about this throughout the game. But da uh, L.A. is about as aggressive as they come defensively in this league. They've been turning teams over 26 times, 28 times. And last but not least, keep L.A. off the free throw line and off the O boards. In their victories, they get to that free throw line 18 times, NECA being the one that does it the most. And the O boards, whenever you got an Ogumike on the floor, you better box out and keep them off the glass. And our officials tonight, Roy Gilbey and Tiffany Byrne and Blanca Burns, and we are underway. And the Sparks will have it. Here is Christy Tolliver, the veteran, won a title when she was with Washington. Right down the tunnel, off the glass. No, Charlie Collier touched it, but last touch by the Sparks, and Dallas will have it. Well, if I were to add a fourth key, which our producer doesn't allow me to do four, understandably <laughs> oh, why. Well, why not? <laughs> but Does he know who it, you are? It would be to keep Erica Wheeler in front of you. Don't allow her to get by you, and that is a tall task. Nobody for Chicago could do it yesterday or the other day, and right. it's going to be a big key for Dallas's defense. Yeah, Wheeler had 17.7 assists in that ball game. Inside, Collier point blank, can't get it. Here comes Taya Cooper, played with the Lady Bears of Baylor, and in college, she proved to everybody she had a jump shot and a three-point shot. Becca Gubike on the inside, and Charlie Collier puts up the hand and whistle for the foul. And we're going to see early that NECA gets that inside positioning against Charlie Collier inside. And NECA's balance against contact is one of the things that makes her so efficient and effective inside. Boy, she had a move against Chicago on Sunday that just cleared out the lane as she got the foul and the two. Almost looked like the same move on that play. She's just swatting flies out there. She really out is. Out my way. <laughs> You know, one of the things you learn about Neka Gumake, you spend some time with her, is her demeanor. And her demeanor has changed somewhat this year. Talking to the coaching staff of L.A., she understands this now is her team. Well, again, we talked about it in the opening that she received that core designation, and that's for a reason. Tenth year in the league, and Neka is now the star. Candace Parker leaving and going to Chicago helped pave that way. But honestly, I think this is something that is well past overdue for Neko Gumake. She is as valuable to a team than anybody, I think, in this league is to their team. What a pass from Mabry inside to Kayla Thornton. Gets the two and the foul. I don't know how many more hard falls that Kayla Thornton has in her body left. If you ask her, Kayla Thornton says, I got all kinds of falls left in me. In fact, she thrives off of this type of physical play and contact. And what makes her so great is that she can hit the ground like this and she gets back right. up and stays just as effective. She might give you a grimace, but that heart's still pumping. Well, we saw her twist her ankle twice in the last game on Saturday against Phoenix. Came back from both. Four straight games, KT has had double-figure scoring. Her career record is six consecutive games. See a little over-the-top action that really tries to compromise some off-ball defense early. And it's another way you can head down that tunnel because so much off-ball defense is moving. Ogabawale, number two in the league in scoring, averaging over 23 points a game. Oh, wide open three, doesn't make him pay. Sparks will have it. I love watching Vicki Johnson on that sideline with her young guards. Yeah. She just, there is no panic button available to Nick Vicky. She doesn't want one around her. She's not going to do that. She has too much confidence in what she knows. And part of what she knows is what this team is capable as individuals. It's just a matter of bringing it all together. Shot clock at eight. Oliver over. 
That's Jefferson when, got the three. That's when Christy Tolliver is her best. Shot clock's going down. Game's on the line. Possession's on the line. She's going to hit those shots. Mabry has it rejected. Coffee playing outstanding defense. From the outside, Coffee, a little strong. Collier pulls it away. Dallas doesn't want to give her too many free looks. She hit the bucket, maybe, of the game for L.A. against Chicago the other night in overtime. From the baseline, Kayla Thornton. We know about the scoring presence of Enrique and Marina, but it takes a three-headed monster to be really unstoppable offensive, right. offensively, and KT can be that. Cooper read that perfectly as Agumake slipped everybody. Coach Dallas lost to Phoenix Saturday, 89-85, and after they settled down, they really won the final three quarters of that game. The problem is they didn't stick to the game plan. That's part of the growth process of a team is retention of game plan and execution of it. Up ahead, Wheeler. Mabry tried to put a body on her off-balance shot. Mariah Jefferson out with the rebound. Agumake, a little hesitation. Uh, a little hesitation. Inside, Collier rejected again by Coffey. Her second block already tonight. Can't get discouraged or deterred. You got to know that those are going to fall. Stay at it. And the three is buried. Well, again, the start is going to be so important to this Dallas Wings team. They can't allow this lead that L.A.'s starting to creep into get too big. A nice pass inside to Thornton. Boy, Mabry has threaded the needle twice so far tonight. Cooper with a left hand got around the D. Great teams understand that how to stop momentum is attack right back like that. And LA's IQ and experience showed right there in that possession. Short. Shot clock inside at 10. Mariah off balance shot over Tolliver. Rebound pulled away by Nia Coffey. Fourth year pro out of Northwestern. Having an outstanding year. And Derek Fisher telling us earlier this week, it's because she just worked so hard. A Guba K baseline. A rack NECA. A rack NECA. I don't know if I'm ready for Space Jam 2 to come out right now because a rack NECA is the key villain in that new it. movie. And she's the key villain for every team that's got to come out and play against her in the WNBA. Neka Gumake coming up, firing away, Reagan already four. Yeah, and this is what we're talking about. Iraq Neka taking names. Stand up to cancer night inside the College Park Center tonight, where the Sparks lead the Dallas Wings 14 to 7. Dallas Wing fans stay connected to the team all season long and get inside access and up-to-date news make sure you follow at Dallas Wings on Facebook Instagram and Twitter well Kayla Thornton has shown up big time for this Dallas Wings team early she's three for three and seven points so far Overdue she's been in double Kendo figures Gumake. in four games of the season so far and she's already about there and we're not even halfway through this first quarter KT's performance leadership is crucial for this team right. as they're navigating their way through this four-game losing streak where they've just been so close to getting some wins. This team is just right there, and KT needs to just keep showing this team how to go out and win. Well, Ty Harris has checked into the ball game number 52 for the Dallas Wings. Talked about her in the open, comes off the bench, and she can score. Izzy Harrison also in the lineup for Dallas. Number 20 in her fifth season. Mabry, that'll be an offensive foul. I just love watching Mabry. I know. Because, I mean, the the attitude is like level 10. Right. But it's abs I just love it. It's not an attitude that as a coach you can't stand. It's an attitude that when you know the nature of it, it's a competitiveness and it's a fire. I'll take that any day. Inside this time around, Izzy Harrison. 
Well, Mecca's positioning inside has just been way oh, too yeah. deep. There's nothing anyone can do about that at that point. Only one game this season. The Sparks have shot better than 40%. That was the last game versus Chicago. That's going to be a, a block. Christy Tolliver doesn't like the call. And Brittany Sykes will come off the bench. And Sykes likes coming off the bench. And Derek Fisher talking about her said she just provides so much energy. And she's a defensive spark off the bench. Well, I see your, I see what you did there. Defensive spark. You like that? I like it. I like it. I think what I really like about Sykes right now is how focused she is on big impact. She's got a big time lofty goal that is very attainable. She wants to be defensive player of the year after getting right. second team all defense in the W. She wants to be an all star as KT picks up the, the hand checking foul. But I, I think that's capable, and some she's been very vocal about those goals. And her coach Derek Fisher says, "Go for it." He's not; he doesn't want her to be bashful about goals like that. I tell you what, watching her when she came out for warming up uh, about an hour and a half before the game, she worked extremely hard just on her shot. That's going to be a whistle, and they're going to call it on Kayla Thornton, and that's bad because Kayla Thornton three for three shooting. The rest of the team. 0 for 9, and now she's got two personal fouls. Well, KT's telling Vicki Johnson, I got this. I, and as a coach in these situations, it's hard to call. Right. you got to trust your experienced veteran leadership out there that she's going to understand how she needs to guard in these possessions while she remains in the game with two early. And again, Vicki Johnson telling us this week, Got to stay in the offense. Don't settle for jump shots inside. Harrison, pump fake, got two. I'm telling you, the more Dallas keeps the ball in Mabry's hands and lets right. Enrique play off the ball, I think there's, we're just going to continue to see efficiency go up. Mabry makes such good decisions with the ball in her hand. This, and understand, this replay is not showing the whole picture, but there was a long, hard hedge by Amanda Zawibi trying to disrupt her vision and her spacing, but she stays poised and finds that tunnel, finds the open layup. Now, L.A. turned it over. They've turned it over 20 times in each of the last two games. Collier trying to get position, and I think they're going to call it on Amanda Zowie B, who's playing in just her third game of the year. Had some back problems. Said uh, told us this morning her back is okay. Played 35 minutes, I think it was on uh, Sunday. You see Enrique substitute back in the game for Mariah Jefferson, and. Again, right now, you've got three potential point guards on the floor, anybody that can do a lot, and that's Mabry, Harris, Enrique. They can do a lot on the offensive end, but the challenges are what are you going to yeah. do? What kind of effort are you going to bring on the defensive end? Sykes on Enrique over the wall, and that was a great defense by the Sparks. Well, listen, that defense was knowing your shot clock. Yeah. Their primary ball screen defense has been a hedge and a switch. But Amanda Zowie B recognized that the shot clock was down and there was not enough time for a pass, only a shot. L.A. outstanding at forcing turnovers. Three of the four games they've played, they forced over 25. Zowie B for three. That foul will be on the Sparks. And it'll be on Taya Cooper. That'll be her first personal foul. Rebounding's physical, and it's about early positioning here. And I love how a player like Izzy Harrison is willing to play above right. the defense to rebound. So many players just stay on the ground, but she went after it right there, which allowed her to get that foul drawn. Rhea Holmes has checked into the lineup. She started the last game on Sunday versus Chicago. Boy, it is getting physical. Mabry outside, rattling it. Her first field goal of the evening. Mabry won 20-point game before this season. She's had four straight this year. Holmes out of West Virginia can't get it to go. Harris looks to push it. Gave it a little Pele action. Yeah. 
That's going to be an offensive foul call. You know, I've seen so many of these illegal on-ball screens called, and it, it's happening a lot on the college women's game, on the WNBA level game. We're going to see Derek Fisher get a timeout here. Something's got to happen. It's happening too much that this foul right. call is being made, and either the players aren't understanding it, there's somewhere there's a disconnect, and it's mm -hmm. got to get figured out because ball screens are such a huge part of the game. And it's on all levels. Let's take a look at the WNBA scoring leaders. Tina Charles, and we were, we were talking before the game, and what did you say? She's having just a monster year? I, well, I called her a monster. Like, she's a she monster really right now. And those numbers are incredible, especially considering Elena Deladon is out. We'll see if they stay when she returns that high. But, man, she is performing. And then Brianna Stewart in at number three, Anaja Laney at number four, and Marina Mabry at number five. Nobody that covers the WNBA would have predicted Marina Mayberry averaging over 21 a game. Well, the NCAA doesn't allow me to bet on it. <laughs> but yeah, really? I'll tell you, it's not a bet I would have made. Well, we talked about scoring. Now let's talk about rebounding. Jarquel Jones did play last year in at 10 and a half points. Brianna Stewart right behind her, followed by Griner and Fowles. Caitlin Thornton, though, checking in at number five. Yeah, huge. And like we said, defense is a defense. If you don't rebound, I don't care what kind of system right. that you play. It's going to end most of the time with the shot, and you've got to clean it up on the glass. And KT doing her part for Dallas. You know, you look at the Sparks team, only four players are back from last year. You look at the wings with all the new faces they have. And talking to both coaches, both teams are still trying to find their identity. L.A. getting a little closer to it. They are. A lot of people started to panic when L.A. started 0-2 and, and lost to Dallas in that first game. But you got to understand, there were three key players that hadn't played a game since 2019 for L.A. And, you know, that that being Ogumake, uh, uh, spacing off of the view of their name, Sykes. Coffee, that we be are huge off the bench, but Shanae, Christy, and Wheeler were all three players that played since 2019. They're going to call that an offensive foul on Arike. We got to take another look at this one, and I'm sure officials sometimes wish they could take another oh, look in the moment. That was, that was just an illegal screen by Izzy Harris yeah. not getting set, but smart by the defender. That's IQ right there, knowing that if that screener was not set and how to run into that player. Well, wiped off the three-pointer by Arike. Maybe that'll get her going. Wheeler, nice move. Holmes can't get a handle on it. Lost it. That's what I'm saying. You've got to keep Wheeler in front of you. Somebody has to disrupt her vision and stay in front, whether you're switching or keeping a drop with the post player. That's about, not going to cut it. How about that? Two different color shoes. I do that, but it's not intentional. Have you ever walked out of the house and looked down and went, uh-oh? Well... Can you come on? Okay, I'm old. I'm I trying to help you, Ron. Well, you're looking at your shoes now, which well, is no, really I'm looking, funny. My chair has fallen through the cracks, literally. So I'm a little distracted over here. I like, I like the style, though. I may have to do that. <laughs> it is kind of a cool style. I mean, you can, when you do it the next time on accident, now you can say it was on purpose. <laughs> exactly. Ty Harris is my hero. I'm just following her. Sykes on the drive, right hand, left side, basket. Awak Kawir, by the way, has checked into the lineup for Dallas, number 28, the rookie out of Finland. And Mabry answers. It's the, the main problem I see with Dallas' defense is they're too porous on the ball. They allow people to get by. They don't grit in and keep that ball in front of them and take pride as Amanda Zawibi finds the bottom of the net from the three-point line, and that is a strength of that woman. Well, the first three years, she averaged 20 three-point attempts a year. 
last three years, she's averaged 77 three-point attempts a season. She added that to her game three years ago. Yeah, let's not forget, she spent some time here in Dallas. It wasn't very long, but I remember coming and watching this Wings team when they first moved here from Tulsa, and she was fresh out of college, and I thought, man, this woman is going to be really, really good. And things didn't work out for her here, but she's definitely developed into a, a legit pro. Enrique is going to be fouled out of the play. She's the first player I met the opening practice for the Dallas Wings. Yeah, coming out of Minnesota, she was a little bit of an um, undervalued player in the draft, but she's definitely increased that value every single season. She came over from New York. Enrique will go to the line. Already are still looking for her first points of the ball game. 2022 Dallas Wings season tickets are on sale now. You can join the Dallas Wings family today. Visit DallasWings.com and click on tickets or call 817-469-9464 for more information. And next year, this place will be open completely. Right now, attendance is limited to about 3,000. And a good crowd on hand tonight. One of the challenges I think that Vicki Johnson has, and a lot of the coaches in this league have to navigate through, is how do you get a player like Owakuir acclimated? You don't have a lot of practice time, so you almost have to force feed it in the course of games so that she can get that confidence. Everyone can see how special she's going to be as the Dallas Wings here trail by five. Uh, welcome to the second quarter. Talk about the first quarter and the challenges on the defensive end that you're seeing. Well, I think um, NECA got off to a good start down there, so that was tough for us. Um, I think we may need to bring some help, a little bit of a hedge, maybe some kind of trapping on her um, because she was just really going to work. You're seeing right now after this first quarter as you trail by five that Marina's doing some really special things coming off of the ball screen and keeping Arike a little bit more off the ball. Is that intentional or an adjustment just to how they're playing him? Um, no, I think that's just what they're in the flow of doing right now. It's really no restriction per se, um, but she's doing a great job, and I think um, Marina makes really good uh, decisions and things like that and is, has the ability to make tough shots. Well, good luck this second quarter, Coach. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, Marina Mabry already with four assists. Her career and season high is seven. Wings trail by as many as nine in that opening quarter. And again, it's almost the same story. They get down and they have to kind of crawl back and scratch back and get back into the game. Well, it's never been out of control or out of reach so far. So I think that's growth right there. But I, I like how the assistant coach for the Dallas Wings, Kelly Raymond, says, I think we might need to bring a little help on defense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on NECA. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's sometimes coaching is like master of the obvious, right? Exactly. And you just have to state what is obvious to everyone in the gym. In gym. If NECA's on the floor, she's going to get the ball. Bring a double. I'd like to see Mariah Jefferson on that drive. She has fought so hard to get back in shape. Has overcome a lot of adversity. Says, I'm not listening to the naysayers this year. A lot to hear. Go, looking for her first WNBA points. And there is Marina Mabry. Not a surprise. She averages over six rebounds a ball game. And a whistle on a foul. Let's go back to the last basket by Mariah. Yeah, well, again, just some good spacing opened up a, a wider seam for Mariah to be able to catch that and then turn right downhill almost off of a curl action. And, you know, one of Mariah's challenges with her size is sometimes finishing, but she can get creative there. Now you were talking about getting like a walk career, just 19 years old playing time. Vicky says, I'm going to throw her into the fire. Well, here's the fire, ball pressure, speed somebody yeah. up, you know, and that's going to be an adjustment. I, when I, do you talk to these players and you ask them, what's the difference between basketball in Europe and over here in the W? And they talk about just the pace of play and the physicality that is permitted and allowed here in the WNBA is a lot more than over in Europe. Mabry splash. And we are tied. Yeah, putting your shooters on that back side is going to help open up a lot of decisions. 
And now the Wings with an opportunity to take the lead. Mabry's in her last three field goal attempts. Ball will belong to Dallas. Neka Gumake quickly back into the lineup. Well, again, when you've got a player like Mabry, you can move her around the court like a queen on a chessboard. Put right. the ball in her hands, put her off the ball, put her on the back side, on the strong side, in the tunnel. And no matter where you put her, defense has to account for her. Bella Allery was open for a second. Arike outside, rattles it home. Starting out 0 for 3, shooting gets her first field goal of the night. L.A. talked about improving the length and athleticism out of their wing spots as we see Coffee look to hit that three. And that's why you see players like Sykes and Coffee on this L.A. roster right now. It's helping them defensively. Hooper, Ellery swats it away. It'll belong to the Sparks. Bella Allery was contending with Neka Ogumake, then had to worry about Cooper. Well, great block by Allery, but I think also a heads-up play by Cooper, not a touching right. that ball and recognizing it was going to go out of bounds, their ball baseline. Allery led Dallas in blocks last year with 19 offensive foul. On the Sparks, will go the other way with it. A little bit of momentum shift here for Dallas as they've come out of that half or that quarter. And I think really a big part of it is just a little bit more emphasis defensively. They've gotten right. some boards and held, held transition a little bit deeper into the paint, moved it side to side. That ball movement pays off. You know, when you, when you talk to Vicki Johnson about this team, and she and I were talking the, the day after the Phoenix game, and she said, you know, my system was built for nine players, but we don't have that because of Satu Sable, Alicia Gray, who will be back when the road trip starts, which is good news, the last game without him. But it's taken some adjustments to try to get that system fitting with what she has. Well, Pat Riley used to say, still says, build a system off nine players, rotate eight, but trust five. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I think he knows a little bit of something about basketball, Pat Riley. My favorite Pat Riley, uh, Rileyism. We were talking one time and talking about things that were happening in our lives outside of basketball. He called them peripheral opponents. Uh, I've always loved that line. Mabry stops, pops. Tried to splash it. Allery kept it alive. Arike. Guir just overjumped it. Here comes Sykes. Sykes with a bump and no basket, but a foul is going to be called. Should be on Mariah. I think we're continuing to see Sykes' confidence on that offensive end. Yes, she values herself and knows her role as a great defender. She steps up and performs that. But she also has a goal to be first team all WNBA. And defense isn't going to get you that. you got to also show what you can do on the offensive end. And uh, she wants to be more consistent there. She's definitely, I think, growing in that in this season, this fifth year in the W. Well, she had an abdominal contusion last season in 2020. You know, you read the book on Brittany Sykes, and it's attacks off the dribble, cuts to the hoop well, and wants the tunnel. We've seen all of that tonight. That's a player executing a role. Yeah. It's all you can ask. Dallas up by one. Mabry gets a step on the defense. Pull up at 15. They're going to call that an offensive foul. Well, you got to believe there might be something in the scouting report about getting this call on Mabry. That's two times that she's gotten this call. And I've seen it out of her a little bit in previous games. It's how she kind of handles some of that ball pressure and somebody in front of her protects it. So, you know, as teams to get, I usually believe it takes three games to really pick up on right. players' tendencies. And here with the wing, she's getting more playing time than she's gotten anywhere, almost doubling her yeah. minutes. So there's more film to be able to go see how she handles different situations. Well, she just picked up her second personal foul. Chelsea Dungey's checked in Malina out of Arkansas. McKay, no. Lock career takes it away from Amanda Zowie B. They have gotten away with an extra step. Arike to the hole. Can't get it to go. Wheeler on top. 
Tolliver launches. Tolliver nails the three. Her second of the ball game. Christy Tolliver's had only five points in the last two games. Six already tonight. Dungey. Mallory doing a nice job tonight in her limited minutes. Mariah for three. I love it when those O-boards turn into three-point plays, either with the putback in one or the kick out to open shooters. Wings regain the advantage by one. Zowie B finds the little piece of tape on the floor, plants her feet, can't get it. A lot of youth on the floor right now for Dallas with Dungy, Awakawir, and Bella Allery. Yeah. By the way, Dungy, that was only her third WNBA field goal attempt. Shot clock at five. Shot clock at four. Jefferson pull up over Tolliver in and out. Oh, I love the way Sykes pulled down the rebound, immediately looked up. Wanted to see if there was anything going down quickly. That's one of their keys in this ballgame. We're going to see strength be exposed right here on Awakuir with Neka posting her up, digging out good deep positioning. Jefferson takes it away from Bella Allery. Talking to Bella earlier this week, she was telling me that she knows her role on this team. Bring energy, play defense. Bella inside over Amanda Zowie B counted. Okay, Bella, you playing for something right now. Performing. These players know roster cuts could be coming. They have to come yeah. for the Dallas Wings. So players like Chelsea Dungy, Bella Allery, and Dana Evans are all going to get opportunities to really show what they can do. Heads or uh, caps off to BJ giving them these opportunities. Absolutely. Bella did a good job of taking the baseline away. Closing in on four minutes to play here in the opening quarter for three. No. Wings lead it by three. That's been their biggest lead. L.A.'s led by as many as nine, and Coach Fisher wants to call a timeout and talk about it. Mariah Jefferson, though, coming alive offensively. Already five points in the ballgame, including one from beyond the arc. Vicki Johnson coaching her players up. They lead it by three, trying to make a two in a row over the Sparks. Show us your Dallas Wings team spirit. Shop for all the latest and most popular Dallas Wings apparel, including the new Explorer jerseys at the official online store of the Dallas Wings. All you have to do is visit shopdallaswings.com. That's shopdallaswings.com. Get all the newest gear to cheer on your favorite team in the WNBA. And we wanted, we talked about Alicia Gray and Satu Sabali coming back. Congratulations to Alicia Gray, one of the qualifiers for the Olympic 3x3 three three basketball. And I think she's back in the Dallas Fort Worth area right now, but she has to go through some protocol. But congratulations, Alicia, going to the Olympics. Yeah, that's huge. Getting to wear USA on your chest and represent the, the U.S. in the Olympics is, you know, just a phenomenal opportunity. I know they wish they had her out on the court right now oh, yeah. here. They, she was a huge part of that victory for Dallas in game one against L.A., scoring 23 points. That was her only game she played. Immediately went overseas to Austria as Cooper misses the shot. Alicia, Satu, we look forward to seeing you when you come back to Dallas after this extended road trip you're about to go on. That's a bummer. I kind of hope to see everybody together. Jefferson, five points tonight, her season high is eight. Dutch. The three. has been out-rebounded on the season by over 11 of all games. Well, they're definitely trending in that direction right now, getting out-rebounded by five early. Oh, nice defense by Dungey getting the hand in there. You know, you mentioned that was the third field goal attempt for Dungey. And what a role difference for Dungey compared to her time right. at Arkansas to here. You know, what got her on the floor a lot of time at Arkansas was the fact that she was like three shot attempts per minute. 
And exactly. here, what's going to keep her on the floor is her ability to defend and take good shots on the offense. Now, Christy Tolliver is on fire tonight. Nine points in the ball game. She's had only one game this season with double figures. Getting back to Dungy, I asked her, uh, I guess it was Sunday or Monday, about that coming off the bed. She goes, it, it's mental. I, I've got to condition myself to doing that. Oh, Mariah! MJ is alive and well. Jefferson, you know, she she just talked about how excited she was to play with BJ again, and that was a place that she really kind of got her career in the WNBA started, right. and that can create such a comfort level and confidence for a point guard. Now Cooper stepped on the line. It'll be Dallas's basketball leading by four. That's their biggest lead of the game. Mariah having a big night. Well, look, BJ and Mariah go back like babies and pacify us <laughs> right there. This is a Commissioner's Cup game, and those of you who are not familiar with the Commissioner's Cup, it's the first season we've had it. Each team will play a total of 10 games with their division rivals, and with the highest winning percentage, we'll be meeting the East versus West on August 12th for the Commissioner's Cup Championship. $500,000 in prize money available. And speaking of Commissioner's Cup, that's called a segue, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Commissioner of the WNBA, Kathy Engelbert, and she is going to be joining us at halftime, and we were visiting her with her before the game, and we both walked away, and I've, I've met her a couple of times, and you're just so impressed of what the job she has done. And that'll be on the American Fidelity Halftime Report. Yeah, home run hire. Yeah. Home run hire. I mean, touchdown, however, whatever analogy you want to put on it, she has been an absolute rock star in this position. And uh, I mean, really, I just think she's just getting started. There's so much growth that's already happened in her short tenure, and you can just see the vision she has for the W. Just the sponsors that she's brought aboard, and, and the two of you were talking about it, and boy, I tell you, she's got more ideas. She's not done yet. Oh, no, not at all. They didn't They didn't bring her in just to be a flash in the pan. She's got long-term visions and willing to put the work in for long-term relationships. Izzy could have gone to the left side, but Neca cut off the right side. That's a kick. And Kayla Thornton back into the lineup playing with two personal fouls. She and Marina Mabry both picking up two in early on in this ball game. Two minutes to go here before halftime. Dallas with their biggest lead of the ball game at four. We're going to see L.A. really test the foot speed on ball defense of Dallas. From the outside, Wheeler can't get it. Thornton pulls down the rebound. All Vicki Johnson wanted from this team tonight. Come out with energy. Play within yourself and the ski. Harris, no. Kayla, offensive rebound. That's big for Dallas. We talked about L.A. That's been a little bit of an Achilles heel for them is how they've not done a great job on the boards as we see again. Dallas's guards just looking to be able to attack right down the middle of the lane and get into the hole. Ty Harris. And that's something Derek Fisher has really had a lot of pride with is his defense. And we saw that uh, late in the fourth quarter and in overtime against Chicago on Sunday. They turned it up a notch. Oh, you did. Absolutely. Brittany Sachs, as we see, she's getting ready to come in the game with Amanda Zowie B. She got two key steals on the ball against Chicago to help seal up the victory but what la does defensively is they put so much ball pressure on their right. opponents and that can be sometimes a little bit of smoke and mirrors it's a first layer challenge for the offensive player if you get past it though get into that second and right. third layer that's where all sometimes la's defense doesn't always come through well, one thing that uh, coach fish told us he said the defense was disrupted against chicago they wanted that to carry over tonight final 105 I would, call, I would call their defense as we see Erica Wheeler taking it in, not a great shot, but I would call their defense high risk, high reward. You know, again, it's, it's successful and they turn people over. Aren't you glad the rim is round? Yeah, they turn people over, LA, 26 times, 28 times, but if they're not turning you over, 
They're giving up sometimes some high percentage shots. Wheeler just one for eight shooting here in the opening half. Zowie B sets the pick. Nice ball movement. Three on the way. Sykes can't get it. Dallas will have it. Three second different shot of the game clock. Don't forget the American Fidelity halftime report coming up. We will have Kathy Engelbert, the commissioner of the WNBA, with us. Really good clock management happening right now by Mariah Jefferson. Enrique inside. Kayla fouled with three to shoot. 5.8 to play. We're going to see, again, just some good little action. This little pitch to a downhill attack forces Christy Tolliver to become more engaged with Enrique than she was with her own player, Kayla Thornton. And then just, you know, losing sight of her is what caused the foul. Dallas has not led at halftime this season. And with 5.8 left, and their biggest lead of the game, they're going to have their first lead at intermission. Important possession here for Dallas. 5.8 seconds is a lot of time for a team with the explosiveness of Erica Wheeler heading up right. court. And the buzzer shot goes. No, and there'll be seven tenths of a second left. I don't still think Erica quite realized no, the I don't time think she did that either. was still available. I mean, Erica is a player that can go from one baseline to the other baseline, I swear, in less than three seconds when she turns those jets on. The buzzer off the glass doesn't get it, but KT, first half of nine points and five rebounds and for the first time this year. The Dallas Wings have the lead at intermission. They lead it by double digits, 38 to 28. And the big story has been Mariah Jefferson, coach. Well, yeah, Mariah Jefferson's just done a great job. You know, we're going to get a chance to speak to her just about the role that she's performed in, and asked to play for a Vicki Johnson squad. And Mariah Jefferson joining us now. Mariah, you have been outstanding offensively tonight. That's kind of what all the work was put in in the offseason, so we could see that tonight. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a tough game. You know, you got to fight a lot, especially when you've been injured. Um, but for me, it's just about taking it one game at a time and, and one day at a time. Mariah, talk about the poise and lack of panic that you all had to show having a small a slow start to now being able to go into halftime with a lead teams are going to punch us every time they come on the floor you know they think we're young but we're not so we have to come out just take control of the game you know we can't get too rushed we can't panic just take our time run our offense and we'll be okay all right outstanding job in the first half good luck the second thank you Mariah Jefferson leading the Dallas Wings for the lead in intermission. Dallas leads at 38-28. American Fidelity halftime report coming up on the other side. Dallas Wings basketball is brought to you by the Dallas Wings Community Foundation. Deeply committed to addressing the needs of our community through awareness, programs, and resources. Welcome back to the College Park Center where the Wings have a 10-point edge over L.A. Coach Johnson, you talked about the importance of rebounding this game and keeping them off the free throw line. you got to be happy with those numbers. I am. I'm very happy. Uh, I'm happy with the energy we're playing with, uh, the team effort. Uh, we're not playing perfect, but we're playing hard. Well, if you were playing perfect, I don't think you guys would be here on this earth doing it right now. <laughs> exactly. So go pursue it, though. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, the fans here love it, and it is loud. It kind of reminds us of a couple of years ago inside the College Park Center, one of the loudest arenas you want to be in. And these fans are hungry for a win, looking for their first home victory of the season. Well, the starts to quarters are so instrumentally important to these young teams in the league. And experience sometimes shows in these moments on both ends of the floor. I think Vicki Johnson told her team this week pay attention to details on both offense and on defense. The steal by Wheeler. She'll have the easy layup, and that's not a way you want to start the second half. Again, high risk, high reward. 
Pre-war defense out of L.A. They're going to run through passing lanes. They're going to trap ball screens, as we see right there. They're going to do everything they can to dis dictate, disrupt, and get that offensive player on their heels. Eight turnovers for Dallas. They had 26 in the first meeting between these two teams. And as mentioned, L.A., three of their four games, they have forced 25 or more turnovers by their opponent. Watch how many times... LA's really like a uh, linebacker rushing a quarterback. They're trying to force right. their decisions to be faster than they're ready. Once again, Shanae Agumake not playing for LA. Bad pass, Mabry into the hands of Tolliver. Nice bounce pass, Cooper to the hole. LA starts out on a 4 0 run, and Vicki Johnson may call the timeout. She's going to want this ball to get past half court. Right. See where her team's. At. She's trying to call timeout. Yeah. For some reason, the official wasn't giving it to him. Well, Vicki Johnson, as soon as they took the ball out, was telling everybody we're calling a timeout. Finally got it. We played less than a minute here in the third. Dan Hughes, the head basketball coach of Seattle, announced his retirement. And here's what Dan has done in his career. Won the NBA title, WNBA title two years ago. Actually, he was kind of an assistant last year because he was not allowed to travel to the bubble. We'll give him two titles, though. But he is a guy that you're close to, I'm close to. We're going to miss him not only coaching, but also seeing him at games and, and chatting. But we're still going to call him for advice. All the oh, time. yeah. But his influence is going to continue on, absolutely. I mean, Vicki Johnson right here was a former assistant and player of his. James Wade, the head coach of Chicago. Brian Agler. And let's not forget Becky Hammond, another coaching legend right now who's had the, the influence of Dan Hughes. Enrique, no. In fact, Dan Hughes told Vicki Johnson he wanted her as a player, and then when he got her as a player in San Antonio, he said, if you ever want to coach, I'll find a place. Neka Gumake can't get it. Here comes Enrique Ogumbawale. Well, when you get to know Dan, you know that his word is everything. Oh, what a nice pass from Jefferson to Thornton, and KT's in double figures with 11. L.A. get into a little swing action here, and this creates a lot of two-man between Christy Tolliver and Neca. It, it's a tough combination to defend because they're both scoring threats. Boy, Collier and Neca going at it, and they both tumble down. Neca is tough, and you don't, you're not going to see Neca or any of the Agumakes get up and, you know, put on a little show. No, and again, what I'm just respect so much about NECA as a player and we can go on all day about oh. as a woman but as a player let me tell you her balance is always on point and so in those physical altercations I'll say right like she's gonna get the benefit of the doubt for me all the time absolutely I was on Charlie Collier by the way Maya Cooper will shake and bang scoop no as the shot clock goes off here comes Dallas, still leading by eight. Jefferson wide open. Collier had position, got it, leans inside. Yes, Charlie Collier, her first two. That's as simple as it needs to be for Charlie. Get yourself down around that rim. Get your hands up. Get a second chance opportunity. You got to think that. 60% of all the plays are for you as a post player to go get an offensive rebound as we see Charlie get caught on a hold on NECA. But truly, 60%. There's going to be probably 60% oh, yeah. of the possessions are misses. Go get the O-board. Charlie Kyer picks up her third personal foul. I think saying it was a hold was an understatement. It was a grasp. Tough to guard. Well, NECA's doing a great job of initiating all the contact oh, yeah. inside, and that's going to keep you under control. Tolliver lost the handle. Last to touch it. Dallas has it. Great timeout by Vicki Johnson. And you can always tell if a timeout was productive, not just by the first possession, but I think really what are the three, four, five possessions after that timeout turning into Dallas had an outstanding second quarter. Marina, oh, we've got another round rim in the building. 
Mabry with eight. Lead goes to a dozen. Biggest lead of the ball game for the Dallas Wings. Wheeler. Nice job defensively. Thornton showed. That's going to be a three-second call. Well, again, Mabry with the ball in her hands is proven to be very efficient. And again, I think it's because the scores are off the ball and right. she's taking full advantage. What's so quality about Mabry is the decisions she makes. She doesn't take a bad shot. No. And you see very few turnovers coming from her. I loved on that defensive end how Kayla Thornton just showed like she was coming and that really caused the three second. Ogumbawale, no. And it's going to be Dallas's basketball. Arike just two of nine shooting. So but we've seen that trick. happen before. You see what she just did. It's a dead ball. The ball kind of went her way. She went and took a shot on a dead ball just to see the ball go down. We yeah. haven't seen that enough out of Arike today. But I'll tell you what, I've liked seeing her off the ball mm -hmm. in this game a little bit more. Shot clock at two. Got to put it up. Kayla at the buzzer. Marina Mabry, great position and draws the foul. Erica Wheeler is going to have to disagree and object to this call, but we're going to see again the physical play inside by Mabry. She's not afraid to right. kind of get into a Royal Rumble down there. Mabry already with seven rebounds in the ball game, tied her career high with eight rebounds in the game versus Phoenix. Nice. Oh. Jefferson saying, and I thought you knew what that play was, L.A. She found a little counter to it, set this little pin down zipper screen, and the defense was so worried about everybody else. Great inbound pass. Mariah Jefferson with the and one. But let me say this, with the and one opportunity, that's one of my right. pet peeves. I just did one of my own pet peeves. When people there say and one, and you didn't finish the layup, or they say and one, and you don't even you haven't even shot the free throw yet it's an and one when you make the shot and you make the le the free throw there you go right i mean and what's my pet peeve one-handed pass one -handed pass. <laughs> <laughs> and two shoes that don't make yeah i won't say and one ever again now. i won't be able to do say it, it if it happens okay 14 point advantage here's mariah again already a season high in points thornton on zowie vino Collier fights for it, got it, and scores. Simple, simple, keep it simple. I, one of my favorite phrases is live simply so others can simply live. There you and go. And you don't need to complicate the game. Charlie Collier can make herself elite as an offensive rebounder. She can score probably six to eight points a game just off of that action right here. We see KT get a shot, and Charlie does a great job drilling that defender, Neka Ogumike, under the rim, so Neka could do nothing with it. It's Charlie's O board. And then again, when Charlie Collier gets that left shoulder, wrap. And that's a 10-0 run for the Dallas Wings. You want to remind you, the next home game will be coming up. It's going to be a while. It'll be June 17th versus Minnesota. And they'll be on the extended road trip, but at 7 o'clock on June 17th, the Lynx come to town. And don't forget, be sure to tune in to Valley Sports Southwest or CBS Sports Network to watch. And there is Simone Augustus. She played last season, was going to play this year, had a workout, said she did like 46 reps, got in her car, said, I, I was so tired I couldn't turn on the ignition. And I knew it was time to retire, but what an incredible career for Simone Augustus. Yeah, Coach Augustus is, I think, uh, not only did she find her stride as a player, clearly with these highlights, but she's going to find her stride as a coach. I'm so glad that she decided to stay in the game in this kind of way. And let me tell you, if you're an L.A. Sparks yeah. and you're an L.A. Sparks guard, could you ask for two better mentors right there than Simone Augustus and Derek Fisher? Great defense by the Wings. Sykes just lost the handle. There was a quartet of players around the Sparks on that possession. And that's going to be a foul called on Sykes. I get a little bit of sense of frustration now by L.A. 
Well, yeah, I mean, LA is coming into this game probably with a little chip on their shoulder, a little bit more confidence. They lost to Dallas in game one. People were kind of talking a little mess about LA after that yeah. loss, but they righted the ship a bit, and I think they came into this game thinking this was going to be a dub. Mariah lost the handle, and it'll belong to LA. There's a lot of basketball left in this. Oh, yeah. Game, I mean, we got a whole quarter and a half, and an explosive scoring team L.A. has the potential to beat. L.A. comes in averaging just under 75 points a ball game. Dallas averaging over 90 points a ball game. Everybody thought this would be offense versus defense tonight. NECA tied up. Good job, Arike. That's great defense, recognizing where the ultimate threat is. Enrique guarding Sykes at the three-point line means she can congest in and help keep that ball out of the paint. That's the threat right there, the point of attack. Got to stop it. Enrique doesn't even go for it. NECA tips it over to Wheeler. Wheeler left open. That's a two. Off the mark. Here comes Arike. Wings have numbers. Arike tried to bounce it in to Caleb Thornton. It was kicked. Why not make it? No, why not try? I think why that's not? perfect. Like, why I, not go for that? Yes. The late Jerry Sloan, who I think is one of the best coaches ever. I oh got to watch far. him in practices a lot. And one of the things that I just learned from him a lot was he talked about positive turnovers and yeah. how sometimes there can be a turnover that actually will create a lot of good looks for you in the future. And Enrique, yeah, and Enrique giving up the ball in transition, I'd say, would be a positive turnover. Well, Zawi B got a piece of that one and will go the other way as we're inside of 435 to play here in the third. And Mariah puts up the hand. I did it. You know, one of the things that Vicki Johnson wants her players to do, and, and we go back to the nine-player rotation, she says, I want you to come in and play four to five minutes hard. I don't want you to have to play ten minutes. You know, she wants you, when you're in there, kind of like a hockey shift almost. Yeah, well, what she is trying to prevent is people playing conservative, complacent, and they, she doesn't want them to conserve. Inside Zowie B. Great passing, interior passing there. Well, they doubled up Neka Gumakesh right on the catch, but it was good ball movement. Mabry, that's a tough shot, rims it. Zowie B, the gift with the rebound. Enrique, oh, that's going to be an offensive foul. She stuck the left chicken wing out and made sure Bria Holmes wasn't going to get anywhere near her. So, not only was that an offensive foul there, but it was nearly a technical, and I think yeah. <laughs> Roy, official, was uh, very close to calling it. Instead, just gave a delay of game warning to Enrique for tossing that ball. Well, it was very obvious. I mean, you saw it coming. I think that's great officiating. You know? Just recognizing yeah. the moment and not overreacting and, and you know, just really acknowledging what these players are going through even within the course of a possession nonetheless the whole game. Shot clock at three. Cooper fires away. No. Rebound pulled away. Neko with the offensive rebound and put back. She's in double digits now with ten. Neko Gumake is on my Mount Rushmore. I, I can't oh. even hide it. I fangirl. Neko <laughs> Gumake. She's just incredible as we see. Nice ball movement by Dallas ending with a three by Ty Harris. I watched Neko on the shot last night and she just get to hang out as we see yeah. another three by Amanda Zowie B. But Neka just is hanging out with Jay-Z and LeBron James and Bad Bunny. I mean she keeps some pretty good company right there. Okay, I knew one of those, two of those people. <laughs> you don't let me guess Bad Bunny was the one you don't. No, no, Bad Bunny I thought was a cartoon. I may be wrong. I think my grandson reads that book. Cooper on top, Amanda Zowie B can get him back into the game with that three-point shooting we talked about, and here comes Enrique. Lost the handle. 
Harris wisely will hold it up. Marina, they left her open for three. Doesn't make him pay. Izzy crashes into Zowie B, and that'll be a foul on Izzy Harrison. Well, what Dallas is doing a great job of right now is getting these defensive stops, whether they're coming right. off of loose balls, 50-50s, coming off of defensive rebounds, and they're not just pushing in transition, but they're flattening the defense of L.A. And that's being done by rim runners, by wings getting out wide and getting all the way to the baselines, ball getting kicked up, and that's opening up some good looks for them in transition. L.A. averages about 23-point attempts a game. They're already at 19 in this contest. And Kayla Thornton will be whistled for the foul, and that'll be number three on her. Well, Bria Holmes is a product of the Big 12, and uh, unfortunately, I had to be yeah. on the wrong end of some of those base, those attacks by Bria Holmes. And she was really excited to get here to L.A. She was just not very confident, not very comfortable in her, in her previous organization, and she really believed that Derek right. Fisher was going to help her find her best self as a basketball player. Of course, Reagan Peebley, the head basketball coach at TCU, and Bria Holmes talking in the Zoom call today. She said, you know, I haven't found my rhythm yet, and you can't forget that coming into the season, she hadn't played since last September. So she's just starting to get going. And, of course, she played for the legendary Mike Carey at West Virginia. He pays me to say that. He's a legend in West Virginia. He absolutely okay. is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is. I'm teasing. I love that man. And this time, Holmes with a rejection. Good timing by Bria Holmes. That's her second block of the year. Well, good defense is going to include good rotation, and Bria Holmes didn't give up on that play and recognized with Mabry on a catch with space, you need to sell out on that closeout. Bella Allery back into the lineup has given the wings some good minutes tonight. Harris, Sykes, good defense. Just swats it away, then pulls it away. Poor Sykes just, she, she clamps down on you, you're not going anywhere. Holmes, no. Everybody trying to time the rebound, and Zowie B comes up with it. The product of sweep. One twenty to play here in the third. Boy, Zowie B just has it taken away. I thought it was going to be a travel call. Harris, Mabry to the hole. Oh! Get your stop and get running. And that's exactly what Dallas is trying to do. But in that possession, L.A. stepped up oh, and was able to take the charge. And this was a great, smart play by Taya Cooper. And it's busting up the play after the pass, which is very much within her right as a defender. She had her feet set. And... Ty Harris had the responsibility of recognizing that and being more under control off of that pass. Well, the basket waved off, but the wings still lead by 11. They've led by as many as 16, all coming in this quarter. The three, right back into it, drilling it from the outside, Nia Coffey. Sixth from beyond the arc tonight for Los Angeles, and the lead's cut to eight. Let's see if Los Angeles, like they did against Chicago on Sunday, turn up that defense. They got a lot of pride in it. Mabry's pull up way short. It's one thing Derek Fisher was talking about after that Chicago game, how they were disruptive. He said the team is starting to understand defense. They're understanding pacing. And first couple games of the year, they were thinking instead of playing. Now they're just playing. Well, I'll tell you, I think the other thing that's really working well for them is that trifecta that comes off the bench for them and Amanda Zowie B and Brittany Sykes and Bria Holmes. I mean, right now, the between the three of them, I'm not very good at math, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're near 40 points for L.A. between those three players. Well, oh, the bench for both teams didn't do a whole lot in that first uh, half. Both teams were just two of ten shooting in that first half, but they've come alive in the second half. Clearly bad at the <laughs> I was totaling their minutes. 
<laughs> not their points, but they still way, yeah, are producing a heck of a lot of points coming off the bench I did for that LA. Last game. I'm not used to, we don't get the stat sheets with the COVID protocols right here, and so we're going off of this computer screen, and I'm just not cool enough to make that <laughs> adjustment. Well, Taya Cooper gets the free throw, and with 21.6, shot clock turned off, wings lead. Cooper now six points, three rebounds. Wings will go for one. Awak Kuir in the lineup. Harris thought about it, then takes it, then makes it. to three. Cooper has it rejected by Awaku Ear. And that's the way the third quarter will end. Welcome to the WNBA, Awak. Well, Awaku Ear has no limits to her potential here in the WNBA as the Wings lead by nine. Dallas Wings basketball is brought to you by Novatech, the Metroplex's managed IT and office technology experts. And by American Airlines, official airlines of the Dallas Wings. You are why we fly. Before to LA's 45, Coach Willingham, can you uh, share some of the keys to this fourth quarter for the Wings? Right now, we're just going to have to keep our poise. Um, this is a game of runs. They made their run. Now it's time for us just to settle down on defense, stick to our show defense, Make sure that we're rebounding, and then we're patient on the offensive end and making good passes and make the extra pass and get good shots. Your depth has really showed up for you in key moments tonight. As you head into this fourth quarter, everyone available, who are some of those key positions to help you close out defensively? Um, I think uh, that's one of our strengths, our depth. Um, I think we can call on a number of people to help us out in this quarter, but of course, Mariah and her pressure defense, um, Charlie showed up big for us. I, I think everybody has the potential to really show up for us. We're, we're a team dip defense. We're not relying on one person. Our defense is predicated on everyone working together. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, for the second time this season, the Wings lead after three. Yeah, well, really what I'm trying to get at with that question is seeing who are those players in the game that Vicki Johnson and her staff are starting to really key in on to help them close out games. As we said, you, you've got to get to that space where this is our go-to score. These are our go-to stoppers. That's part of the role building and identity building of this team. But I, I do love how their team is being so focused on depth. It's going to pay off in the long run. This is a long season ahead. Well, Neka Gumake will take a look at it again and uh, grab the leg. I don't know if it was a cramp. But Izzy just kind of got tied up with her and she grabs the knee. But she's trying to walk it off. I mean, that's, and I was kidding her before the game. I was asking her about her nose that she got dinged in Chicago and she took a big blow on that. And she goes, I I'm just used to getting it. She goes, I always get those kind of injuries. She well, takes a beating. Yeah, well, she dishes it out too now. I mean, she's a physical player. And like I said, one of the things about her, she initiates a lot of contact, which is why. Well, Zowie B lost it, got it back again and scored. Trend in this game for Dallas to open quarters is turning that ball over and allowing the defense of L.A. to get them a little rattled. Foul's going to be on Taya Cooper. In case you're just joining us, Wings led by 10 at the end of the first half of play. Led 54-45 at the end of three. Trying to get their second win of the year. They beat L.A. in the season opener as Izzy Harris comes in. And Alok Kouir will go out. You might want to mention this is a, a Commissioner's Cup game, and talking to some of the coaches of L.A., they said this is important, not just for the Commissioner's Cup, but if Dallas wins this game, they will win the series because there's only one more meeting between these two teams, and if they should be tied at the end of the regular season and there's playoff potential, this is the tiebreaker. I think one of the challenges some of the coaches have talked about with this Commissioner Cup is they get it. They, they think it's exciting, but they also want to make sure, as we see Ty Harris... It's the skip pass in the three. And they want to make sure the players also don't forget, this isn't now just about right. the Commissioner Cup. We're trying to get after a championship and get the best seeds that we can get. 
Three straight games, double figures now for Ty Harris, but slipping on the inside, Nia Coffey. Coffey now with three in the ball game. Lead stays at eight. Again, the Wings on an 11-day extended road trip after tonight. Here's Arike. Draws the contact and the foul. That is what she does so well. Talk about the Commissioner Cup standings. Here they are in the West. Seattle playing great. Phoenix 2-1, and one, beating Dallas. And the Aces playing tonight. Wings and Sparks in the bottom. But there's still a lot of basketball left to be played in this season. A lot of basketball. And, I mean, some of these players are also going to be playing basketball over the Olympic break because they're on their national teams. And that's going to be an interesting dynamic to this season to see how teams come out of that break with such a long right. hiatus. Teams that are humming and rolling before the break, are they going to be able to sustain that coming out of the break? There's a lot of the unique dynamics to this 2021 season. Well, Connecticut beat Las Vegas tonight, 74-67 is... Liz Cambage got to meet her favorite coach again. Kurt Miller. Big win, though, for Connecticut on the inside. No whistle and a foul's called. Just a little bit more of what Ty Harris is bringing coming off the bench for the Dallas Wings. She's just efficient and productive with her time. And here is Ty Harris at the line. Vicki Johnson told her at the beginning of the year, want you to be more aggressive. She said she's been in my ear to shoot the mid-range more. Tell Dallas Wings fans, visit DallasWings.com to see the latest news, rosters, game recaps, merchandise, and more. That's DallasWings.com. Oh. Now here's 12 points tonight to go along with a couple of assists. Just about four, two minutes gone by here in the fourth. Lead back to double digits. Tolliver again with a three. That is her third of the ball game. I'm telling you, I swear over the years watching Christy Tolliver, oh. the more contested, the more open they are to her. Won a title, of course, with Washington. Last nine years, she's averaged double figures. Count it. Let's not forget about the title she also won with L.A. Right. Low pressure, low pressure. And with Maryland. With Maryland. <laughs> In college. I know. She didn't play last season. Decided to opt out. Had 11 points in that first meeting with these two teams. Zowie B, no. golfer has got 11 again tonight. This is the time of the game. I think Dallas really needs to put the foot down. Oh. Is he? Powell's going to be called on Coffey. It's great little action there out of Izzy, just faking the dribble handoff with that player she's faking it to getting denied. That allows her to turn the corner tight. Right. And Izzy's got that ability, I think, in small spaces to twist, turn. We've talked about that Izzy tizzy that she gets into. Um, and, and really, she does a great job of getting herself to that free throw line. Take a look at that last play once again. This is what I'm saying here. Because Mabry's hit some threes, she's getting played with such proximity, and faking that handoff allows her to be able to find a little seam and turn the corner. Busy Harrison 0 for 5 against Phoenix on Saturday. No points. First time since August 4, 2020, she went scoreless. Last two games, she has struggled from the outside. Only 2 of 10 shooting. But today, she's got four points in the contest and pushes the lead back to double digits. Cooper on Harris. Uh, Wings coaching staff and Vicki Johnson and company cannot believe that foul was called. Well, Vicki Johnson was cheering her on defensively that whole possession as she's guarding and she's reminding her in and out, in and out, because that's a Taya Cooper move, in and out. Don't fall for it. Right. There's too many hands in there towards the end for Roy. 
And you had to go against that at TCU against when she played for Baylor. Yeah, but luckily only one year. Yeah, really. What a year, though. Inside Sykes, no. Cooper for three. The shot clock goes off. Another shot clock violation. And that'll be the 12th turnover tonight for Derek Fisher's squad. Overall series between these two teams, L.A. leads it, but here at home, the Wings have the advantage in the series. Trying to increase that one more tonight. Gort back and down. Mabry, baseline. Right into the hands of Cooper. 13th turnover, Cooper to the hole, count it. Great finish by Cooper, just doing a really good job being aware constantly and keeping that defender on her heels. That ability to finish looks easy, but it's one of the skills that is really valued by these WNBA teams. Kayla Thornton, baseline, gets her 15th point of the ball game. Five straight games, double figures. Her career record is six straight. Tolliver. Kind of a no man's land. Fighting for the rebound. Mabry gets pushed out of the way by Izzy, who pulls it away. Vicki Johnson up yelling instructions to her team. Says she wants them to play freely. And she's doing a great job of making sure spacing is available. With good spacing, you find those backside shooters like Ty Harris. Ty, Ty, oh my! Harris with 16 in the ball game, and the lead is at 14. Well, when there's good spacing on the floor, shooters love to see it. This little pick and pop right down the tunnel to Ty Harris on the three is how the wings will take it into the break. Second game in a row, Ty Harris has hit her career high. She has a career high three pointers made and points, Reagan. She has been outstanding this evening. Well, you got to believe consistency is so key for Ty Harris. She had that injury to her ankle last August of 2020, and that's kind of how she ended the season. But Ty Harris is back, and she's back strong and really stretching that defense for the Dallas Wings. Uh, during the timeout, Neka Gumake was being looked at by the trainer behind their bench. And I think she's still sitting there now as, as we uh, have 5.16 to play. And they're going to take a look at her. But she is not in the lineup, still sitting on the trainer's table. Patricia Trammell, assistant coach, going over and trying to get an update. If we hear anything, we will pass it on to you. Both of Gumake's dealing with a little bit of knee yeah. issues. And Shanae not playing tonight. That was a game-time decision for L.A. From the outside, Coffee drops down the three. But we can see that L.A. with NECA out has decided to go with more of a smaller lineup. They're a long lineup, but not with any kind of a true post player on the floor. They can spread the floor and get creative with some of these lineups. Harris thought about it. Arike, yes for three. Arike, that's only her third field goal made tonight. Holmes, no. Mariah Jefferson smartly looking to advance the break. She's going to be poised, though. She understands time and score. Enrique, that's going to be an offensive foul. That'll be her second personal foul this evening. Boy, Sykes really took it to the gut on that one. Yeah, she did. This is what Sykes wants. She's going to go after this Ow. charge like somebody going after defensive player of the year she again had those two big key steals at the end of the game which helped them seal out the second victory in chicago Derek fisher pointing to coffee coming to come out and help a little bit sykes well off the mark or I should say Bria Holmes well off the mark on that shot. Yeah, Bria Holmes is having a hard time really connecting against Chicago. I believe she was one for six. And tonight the 
woes continue. Well, she was only 2 of 20 shooting coming into tonight. 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. That's going to be three seconds in the lane. Kayla Thornton looks and goes, not me. I don't think I saw a three-second call made all last season, and we've seen two in this game today. 3.35 to play. Wings by 14. Biggest lead has been 16. Holmes on the drive. Misses the layup. My goodness. You know you're struggling when you miss that shot. Well, oh, I think she might have been a little surprised it was that open. Jefferson. Best offensive game of the year. Wings will have it with seven to shoot. Well, the block here was so good. It didn't just knock her socks off. It knocked her shoe off. You can yeah. see <laughs> Mariah Jefferson have to quickly get that shoe placed back on. But you've got to take advantage of those seams. They they opened mm -hmm. up within the offense, and I think L.A. right now is really trying to protect that three-point line. Those are going to be finishes that Mariah Jefferson is going to continue to have to add to her game. This is a big game for Dallas because of the play of Mariah Jefferson. We've been waiting for her to come alive. Ty Harris continues to add to her career high. Becca Gumake, we're hearing, is not going to be returning into this game. Wow. She took a pretty hard fall early in the fourth quarter and landed on her knee, and they're just not going to risk it. Well, they've got it all wrapped up, that left knee, on the far side from where we are. We wish Neka Gumake the best. Just a total class individual. Enrique. Pulled down by Coffey. Coach Fisher could not talk enough about Nia Coffey. Focus, discipline. And Sykes knocks down Enrique. And a little good sportsmanship. With that, we'll take a timeout. Two minutes and 18 seconds. The Wings are away from their second win of 2021. Right after the game, the Wings go on an extended road trip starting. That'll be on uh, Friday night at 9 p.m. They will take on... Uh, Seattle to play the Storm. You can see that on Prime Video. They repeat that performance against uh, the Storm on Sunday. That'll be 6 p.m. You can see that on League Pass. Then they head down to Phoenix on Wednesday, June 9th to take on the Mercury. That'll get underway at 9 o'clock, and you can see that on Valley Sports Southwest and CBS Sports Network. How about Kayla Thornton tonight, Coach? Yeah, well, KT is doing KT things. She's cutting off the ball. She's finding finishes. She's getting herself to the free throw line. And we know that she can pass the ball, too, and get the ball to her scores. But I love what you've noted about how she oh, takes nice care of the ball. Oh, she, is, she has been outstanding not coughing it up. I mean, this season, she has only four turnovers the whole year. And don't forget, she only played, Kayla Thornton only played 10 minutes in that opening half because of foul trouble yeah but and the amount of time that kt's involved with the ball when she's in there to only have four turnovers so far in their season right. is really something special that is rare air right there when you've got somebody with time of possession where she's got it that just has such ball security talrique ogumbawale 43 straight games with double figures a wings record and the longest active double figure streak in the WNBA she struggled shooting tonight only three of 12 but now she's got 14 of the game and the lead gets pushed to 18 again Neka Agumake will not return to the game because of that knee oh it counts, Rio Holmes. It counts. there's no style points in basketball and look I'm just telling you that hit the backboard so hard. We could hear it clearly all the way up here, not because of a microphone. That's her first three of the ball game. They're going to call it travel. I thought it was more of a push. But for uh, Brio Holmes, her first three-pointer made this season. They need to check the backboard. There may be a crack up there. A minute 
45 seconds right now. We're seeing some opportunity out there for Chelsea Dungy. We see Taya Cooper draw the foul. And these are important minutes for any player. This is an opportunity really not to take for granted to show defensively your right. efforts, show what you can do offensively. And remember, you belong. Exactly. I'm telling you, Chelsea Dungy was one of the best scorers in all of the NCAA over the last few years, and she could do it in a lot of ways. Dana Evans set to check in the lineup for the first time. Christy Tolliver, she has been a major bright spot for Derek Fisher's squad. She's got 14 in the ball game, four of five from beyond the arc. I think what Vicki Johnson is going to be pleased with, you held L.A. so far to 38% shooting. Coming into the game, opponents were at 45. Awak Kawir looking for her first WNBA points. And she may get it from the free throw line. Now looking for her first field goal. She's already had one free throw made this year. Well, again, Awak Kawir is going to be incredibly special. She's 19 years old. This is her first time here in the States playing the WNBA. She's been a pro for some time now. She's got experience playing in Italy with Izzy Harrison. I think that relationship's right. really special and is going to really help her confidence grow. One of the, again, the biggest differences for her probably she's experiencing is the strength and explosiveness of the game over here. And, you know, she just doesn't have it yet right now. I mean, she's going to continue to mature in a lot of ways in this game, and that strength is going to be one of them that'll need to happen. Well, Ty Harris is going to go out. Marina Mabry is going to go out. Arike Ogunbowale will go out, and they get a nice round of applause. Well, right now, I, I think what's kind of funny is there's a little conversation going on between Charlie Collier and Bell Allery and Awak is who's the three? All three <laughs> of us are in here. Somebody's got to play. And I think all three of them wanted to raise their hand and said, I'll be the three. Exactly. <laughs> Sykes on the drive gets fouled. Look at Awak. Now, she has dual citizenship with Egypt and Finland. So, obviously, she speaks three languages. Speaks great English, by the way. Very shy when you, when you talk to her. Well, you know, I, I just can continue to preach that this is a player that Vicki Johnson and Greg Bibb are really excited about. Mm -hmm. And the challenge that they have right now is how do we get our number two pick? Somebody we know who's going to be just fierce in this league. How do we get her some experience right now? Yeah. And practice time is just so hard to come by. Well, Vicki Johnson said, I never came off the bench when I played in the WNBA. They threw me into the fire, and I believe all rookies should be taken that way. Dana Evans in the lineup, has it taken away. I'll say Vicky was in a different situation. Right. Though so Vicky had been playing over in Europe and was a little bit more seasoned. seasoned. I don't want to say all. When the league started, Vicky wasn't 19. Yeah, exactly. And from another country. A lot. Learning that you really can't put the ball on top of the on the floor, top of the key when you're that big. Evans, no. Allery, shot clock at one. That'll be a shot clock violation. But this is going to be a big win for the Dallas Wings. They open the season with a win over Los Angeles, and they close out this homestand with a win over Los Angeles. And Vicki Johnson may get a little sleep tonight. She deserves some sleep tonight. Yeah. I was kidding her the other day when we were talking, and I said, you know, every coach, starting with, I guess, Doug Collins was the first guy that told me, you go to bed, you always keep a little pad of paper next to your night uh, nightstand. And she goes, yeah, I do. Because you wake up in the middle of the night going, oh, i got to remember to do this tomorrow. Maybe she'll get a little sleep tonight. <laughs> Cooper on the scoop. Whistle and a foul, 6.8 left. Listen, Charlie Collier, people are just trying to get done with this game. And I mean that, like, yeah. in an IQ development way. Don't need to foul. You're gonna, The game is sealed up. No need to foul. Don't stop the clock. Just soft challenge. Say nice layup. Move on.
Wings will put five players in double figures, led by Ty Harris, a career high 18 in the ball game. Kayla Thornton, another double figure game with 15 and seven. Wings will out rebound Los Angeles 41 to 24, and that was a concern for Derek Fisher coming into the game. But the Wings win it. 79-69, their first home win of the 2021 season. Well, big one for Dallas as they've, you know, they've had probably their confidence shook a little bit in the last four games. And this wasn't against a, a down-in-the-dumps L.A. Sparks team. This was this L.A. Sparks team that was starting to find their rhythm. So great win that I think they can take a lot from. Now the big story also was Ty Harris for the second game in a row. Ty Harris gets her career high, also hit a career high number of three-pointers with four. And Ty Harris joins us right now. Ty, Ron Thulin along with Reagan Peebley. Congratulations, 18 points tonight to go along with three assists. You also had a career high, four three-pointers made. Now, Vicky's been in your ear to shoot it, am I right? <laughs> yes. Well, you yes. shot it tonight, girl. Good Every job. day. <laughs> Good job. Talk about tonight and the job you did. Um, I mean, I got to give all the credit to my teammates and my coaching staff. Uh, they instill confidence in me every day, every day in practice, every day in shoot around. They're always yelling at me to shoot the ball. She said, if you get the nail shot three, seven, ten times, shoot it ten times. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to live and die by it. Ty, Coach Johnson told us that early in the season with practices, she had to kind of get on you, say, you're a little too relaxed for me. But she loves you, and she loves what you bring to this uh, Wings team with your depth and uh, your scoring ability. Talk about the role that you have and the growth that you've seen out of your game so far. Uh, yeah, I just got to be uh, comfortable with getting out of my comfort zone. Um, I have to lead this team because I am a point guard. I'm a young point guard, but this is a young team. They believe in me and they trust. We have respect for each other, and that goes a long way. Uh, Coach Vicky instills defense into us, and every day we compete in practice. And I, we get tired of competing against each other, uh, just beating each other up. So we're just happy that we finally get this win on the home court. One final question, Ty. How big was this win for you after losing four in a row and you're about to hit the road? It's super big. We have an 11-day road trip, so this is good just to get on momentum going and uh, turning the page. Ty, enjoyed watching you tonight. We know that's more to come from you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ty Harris, what a great night tonight. A career high in points with 18. Final thoughts. Well, yeah, we talked about the importance of this game for in this game and as in of itself. But as Dallas hits the road, as Ty talked about, they're going to play at Seattle. And another tough game that just they let slip away right at the end of the game. So good confidence builder for them moving forward. It was, and they dominated the boards. They didn't turn the ball over a whole lot. Vicki Johnson said, you've got to start owning this. And I think they did tonight. Once again, the final score, 79-69, the Wings win it. Next telecast on Valley Sports Southwest Plus will be Sunday, June 13th at 5 p.m. as Dallas takes on the Las Vegas Aces. Once again, the final score, wing 79, L.A. 69. For Reagan Peebley and our entire crew in Arlington, I'm Ron Thulin. Thanks so much for watching, and you have been watching Dallas Wings basketball.